Well, the bed is set up, and the cat is lying in it, which must mean I live here now. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so, uh, I'm in my new apartment in Ames, in Iowa, um, and uh, I just, I drove to, to Iowa yesterday all in one day. I was originally going to take uh, an overnight, but just kind of, I was kind of on a roll, and uh, yeah, so I just, I just decided to push through and get here. And um, it, um, it was about 17 hours of driving. Um, I started at 4 a.m. and got here at, um, I think around 10 p.m. And uh, stayed the night in a hotel and then uh, picked up my keys today and here I am. Um, I spent all of today uh, moving uh, all of my possessions from my car into, into this place and then went to a storage locker where I had put most of the rest of my possessions um, to keep for the summer, um, and spent the rest of the day moving them here, so I am exhausted. And I'm also actually really disgusting. Um, I, uh, it's hot and humid, so I, and I was working hard bringing stuff upstairs. I live on the third floor, which is actually the highest floor in this building. So, uh, I, I got quite disgusting. Uh, and, uh, the thing is, is, uh, I would have taken a shower, to just refresh myself, but uh, uh, all of my towels were in the storage locker, and um, when I went to take my stuff out of the storage locker, there were mouse turds in places, and I and um, the towels were in such a place that I didn't trust that they hadn't been touched by mouse turds, and I didn't really relish the opportunity to dry myself off with uh, mouse turd infected towels. So tomorrow I will do laundry and then I will, um, purify myself. Um, but anyway, um, as a treat after my hard day's work, I've just put, um, all of my unread books on my smaller bookshelf. Um, so I have one smaller bookshelf and it's my bookshelf that I have that's really cool because it, like, folds up. Um, the three, you know, uh, platforms come up and uh, once they're up, then the two sides can come in. Um, and uh, so this smaller bookshelf is going to be in this room, which is my bedroom. Um, and it has my unread books on it. And you can probably guess why it's in my bedroom, therefore. Um, but uh, then out, uh, out there will be uh, the larger bookshelf with all the books I have read. Um, and, uh, and that I, I will do probably after I record this video, and then I'll record another video about that one. Uh, but basically I wanted to, um, give you a very short bookshelf tour. Um, I once did, like, this really in-depth bookshelf tour. I don't want to do that now. Um, but another reason I wanted to do this, uh, this, both these videos is just because I actually have acquired a lot of books this summer, um, and haven't talked about all of them, and, uh, I wanted to, but I also... Uh, noticed all the sort of bad press that hauls were getting. Um, and also, a lot of times, you know, I would, like, buy one book. And it's like, doing a haul of one book is a bit presumptuous. Um, uh, so it just never happened. Um, but yeah, so, uh, this is just a chance for me to show off my bookshelves and, uh, talk about some of the books I've acquired. Um, some of them I haven't necessarily acquired, but some of them I, uh, when I was at home, I found because um, they were books that I had left at home thinking I would never read, but then got interested in again. And some others are books of my parents that I kind of just grabbed. Uh, they both told me that I could just grab books if I wanted to. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, without further ado, I will switch the camera around and show you my bookshelf. So there it is from a distance. I'm going to try and show as little of the room as possible because it's still quite messy in here. It's actually a whole lot of books down there. Um, uh, so, uh, anyway, um, yeah, uh, so basically for my unread books, what I do is, uh, all of the, these are all the books I haven't read, as I said, and for the books I haven't read, I don't discriminate based on genre, it's just, uh, alphabetically by author, so the nonfiction and the poetry and, uh, anything is all just mixed in together by author, and if it's an anthology, then it's by, uh, editor. Um, so first, um, this is a collection of poetry by Atel Adnan, which I think I actually did talk about. History of Rome, The Divine Comedy, Aristotle, Like Making Ethics, The Battle for God, A History of Fundamentalism by Karen Armstrong. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Karen Armstrong, she kind of got me into the history of religion and stuff. 
um, Self-Portrait in a Convex Mirror by John Ashbery. Been wanting to read John Ashbery, more John Ashbery for a long time. Um, Murphy by Samuel Beckett. Western Star by Stephen Vincent Benet, which is this uh, long poem. I'm not actually sure it's a narrative poem, but I think it might be, um, about Americans, uh, movement out west, basically. Um, and I was, I was, I grabbed it from, uh, my family's cabin. My family actually has a, a cabin up in the Adirondacks, and, uh, there's a small, a very small library up there, and this was one of the books there, and I was just intrigued by the, uh, opening line, which was, Americans are always moving on, um, which I thought was an interesting line. So yeah, I mean, it seemed kind of up my alley. Uh, the Life and Work of Harold Pinter by Michael Billington, Biography and Critical Study of Pinter's Work, uh, The Decameron by Boccaccio, um, Black Hawk Down by Chris, uh, Mark Bowden, um, which a friend of mine gave to me the last time I saw him, um, and uh, I've heard good things about it. Um, it was actually, I found out that it was uh, highly recommended by Steve Donahue. Um, it was on his top uh, nonfiction for... Uh, some whenever it came out, not in sometime in the nineties. Um, so yeah, um, my Norton critical edition of Wuthering Heights, which is here, even though I actually have read Wuthering Heights because I'm going to be rereading it soon as a buddy read with Wilson Shugart in uh, December. Um, Shakespeare by Ivor Brown, a biography of Shakespeare. Um, the Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, uh, a new history of a lost world by Steve Broussat. Um, I saw this on in a bookstore several times and. Um, I, I was a dinosaur fanatic as a kid. I, I actually, um, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a paleontologist, um, and I haven't read anything about dinosaurs in a long time. So uh, this will be, this will be a nostalgic read. Um, the Civilization of the Middle Ages by Norman F. Cantor, um, Friedrich Nietzsche by Curtis Kate. This is a a book that a friend of mine lent to me, uh, uh, another a, li a biography and a critical study of Nietzsche's work. Um, and yeah, it, it, was, it was a friend of mine who I hadn't talked to since, I think, um, like high school, like our sophomore or junior year of high school, and uh, we just reconnected this summer, and uh, yeah, he's super into Nietzsche. He's read like almost everything he wrote, so, um, and he lent me this uh, critical study and biography, so I'm really looking forward to reading that. Don Quixote by Cervantes, a pre-Socratics reader, um, uh, just a collection of the writings of the pre-Socratic, the Greek Greek uh, philosophers. Um, White Noise by Don DeLillo, um, which I bought this summer um, because uh, I have been... Postmodern fiction is one of those um, areas of literature I've wanted to get into that I just haven't gotten around to, and so this summer I bought uh, White Noise, and uh, a couple of others, a couple a couple of other novels that we'll uh, get to in a minute. Um, but The Souls of Black Folk by E.B. Du Bois, Who Were the Celts by Duffy, um, uh, Emerson's Essays, a big collection of essays by Ralph Waldo, well, Ralph Waldo Emerson, sorry. Um, literary Theory by Terry Eagleton, an intro to literary theory, um, all the main schools of, uh, of it. Um, I've been Wanted to learn more about literary theory just because I'm generally interested in literature and this, you know, an introduction to literary theory that, uh, that, uh, at least the dust jacket says is, a, is sort of a classic seemed good. Um, and it seemed to have good just general overviews, so I bought it. Uh, Middle March, um, uh, here we go. Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. It's a novel that I, one of those novels that I, I picked up because I, I had been interested in but then left at home. Um, but when I was home this summer, I realized that I probably should read it just because because I was interested in it before and I still am um, So there's that Shakespeare after all by Marjorie Garber, um, which I'm gonna sort of chip away at as I reread Shakespeare's plays and uh, watch them um, A History of the First World War by Martin Gilbert. Uh, this was something my uh, grandpa gave me uh, my mom's father um, Dead Souls by Nikolai Gogol um, Another uh, Russian novel. I'm, again, Russian literature, one of those things I keep wanting to get more into because it's, you know, what I, what Russian literature I've read is just is right up my alley and um, I, I want to get more into it and I just haven't gotten around to it, but this was in my parents' house, so um, there's that. Uh, Myths and Legends of the Middle Ages by H.A. Gerber. Um, a Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry, a play. Um, the First World War, another history of the First World War by Har um, 
I don't, I don't know if this is really a famous author, but uh, anyway, this is a book I got from uh, from my dad. My dad had a, has a, a master's degree in history, and uh, I think this was something he read for school. Um, Histories of Herodotus, which I still haven't finished. I have 200 pages left. Um, I think maybe what I might do with the history is I might just have to uh, find a better translation. I think this one is a bit archaic and difficult to read, so I know that not too long ago there was a book published called The um, the Landmark Herodotus, which is supposed to be really nice. I read an excerpt of it, actually. It was very accessibly written. and has, like, maps and annotations and everything to sort of help you out, and uh, I think that might be what I need to read. Um, I may I may push through finishing this and then reread Herodotus in uh, the landmark Herodotus, but uh, we'll see. Um, Hitch 22, A Doll's House, um, Broke It in a Love Story, which I've talked about, Political Psychology, A Portrait of the Artist as Young Man and Dubliners by uh, James Joyce. Again, Joyce, uh, one of those authors I've been meaning to get to forever that I just somehow never buckle down and uh, pick up, so here he is. Um, his, I've heard these are two, his two most accessible novels, uh, or, um, novel and collection of short stories. Um, so that's why I picked them up. I may eventually read Ulysses, I'm not sure. Um, I know that Crystal would tell me I should, but, uh, we'll see. Um, Love and Garbage by Ivan Klima, a, uh, a novel, a uh, Czech novel, um, about a man living under communist Czechoslovakia and his, uh, extramarital affair, as well as his, uh, sort of musings on art and literature. Um, which I started tried to read last year and for some reason just couldn't get through. Um, but something's drawing me back to it because I I was reading it and I kind of felt like okay this seems like something I should really like like this feels right up my alley because it's, you know he's talking about literature and he's philosophizing and so I don't know I I um, I'm gonna revisit that. Uh, Damned to Fame, a biography of Samuel Beckett um, by James Nolson, another book I got from my grandpa. Um, uh, the Second Treatise of Government and a Letter of Concern and Toleration by Locke. Death in Venice by Death in Venice and Seven Other Stories by Thomas Mann, which I read a a good chunk of this summer, almost half of. Um, and I think Thomas Mann is going to be one of those authors that I really will want to just eat up his entire oeuvre because um, again, just right up my alley, very philosophical and heavy and uh, just character driven, the kind of thing that I I just love. Um, American Epic, The Story of the American Indian by uh, Marriott and Ratchlin, uh, two authors. Uh, it's a very old, from the 80s, history of uh, Native Americans, and uh, actually also got it from my family's cabin. And um, I've read the, the first few pages, and it seems really well written, so uh, looking forward to that. Uh, the Spoon River Anthology by Edgar Lee Masters. Um, basic works of Aristotle which a friend gave to me um, last spring. Um, the Book of Ephraim by James Merrill, which is, uh, you know, I was hoping, I went to the bookstore one day hoping to find uh, The Changing Light at Sandover, the entire poem, uh, but it's, it's not really something I think that, you know, something like Barnes & Noble will have, but Barnes & Noble had this, and this is uh, just the first book in The Changing Light at Sandover. There are three books in it, and, um, so this is the book of a frame with like a ton of annotations. So like only half, maybe not not even half this book is I think um, the poem itself. Um, the majority of it is just end notes, um, and then there's a huge introduction by uh, Stephen uh, Stephen Yenser, who I think uh, knew James Merrill and actually uh, edited. Well, um, you know uh, James Merrill would write poetry and send them off to people to uh, comment on it before he got it published, and uh, Stephen Yenser was one of them, so he's is, getting his perspective will be super interesting. Um, the Nag Ham Hamadi, Hamad Hamadi scriptures, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, um, but this is a translation and collection of the Dead Sea Scrolls, with each with uh, commentary and introduction uh, by different scholars. Um, again, another book that I sort of set aside thinking I'll, I'll just never read that, but now I've, I'm sort of interested, especially after reading the Gospels in the in the uh, Gospel read-along earlier this year, I sort of um, got interested in these, so I, I think I might read them eventually. Um, selected Essays by Montaigne, The Land of Green Plums by Herta Mueller, um, which is about um, students living in, I believe, communist Romania, and uh, Herta Mueller, I know, won the Nobel Prize. Um, down here we have 
the three more novels by Larry McMurtry. After reading uh, Lonesome Dove, I wanted to read more by Larry McMurtry, and these are the three other novels in the Lonesome Dove series. Um, the Streets of Laredo takes place after Lonesome Dove, and then Dead Man's, La Dead Man's Walk and Comanche Moon are prequels. Um, Thus Spoke Zarathustra by Friedrich Nietzsche. Um, different translation than the one I've already read. And then uh, here I have... Uh, oop, I put them on backwards. Um, so uh, this is... Uh, sorry, I'm going to change these right now. Um, so these are uh, the complete works of Harold Pinter. Um, which I, again, got from my grandpa. Um, but yeah, so basically what I've been doing with Harold Pinter, I've now read two plays by him. Um, I read uh, The Birthday Party first, and was sort of a little bit mystified. Um, didn't really get it. Um, and then I read uh, uh, Michael Billington's commentary, and, um, and I feel like I'll definitely revisit it at some point after having read that, because I, I was kind of intrigued by the points he made about it, and... Um, would like to kind of see for myself um, while experiencing the play. And then I read The Room and liked it a lot more, and I think got a lot more out of it just on my reading experience, uh, but then also read uh, Billington's commentary and, um, and again, uh, found it quite interesting. Uh, the Bhagavad Gita with a, uh, a new translation commentary by uh, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Next, uh, The After Party by Yana Prekril. Um, which I actually read a review of in The New Yorker and thought it sounded really good. And um, I've been wanting to read more contemporary poets, so one that I'd read a review of seemed like a good place to go. Um, Close Range, collection of short stories by Annie Prue. Um, Crying of Lot 49 by Thomas Pynchon, again, trying to get into postmodern <laughs> fiction, finally. Um, On the Social Contract by Jean-Jacques Rousseau. The Grand Tetons by Margaret Sanborn, which I've talked about. Behave by Robert Sapolsky, which I think I've talked about, although I'm not sure I sh Yes, I did show it on this channel. Um, but yeah, I've been, I want to read more neuroscience. Um, three plays, or plays political, which is a collection of three plays by George Bernard Shaw. Uh, a selection of the Talmud. I'm very interested in reading uh, religious texts, um, and uh, reading the entire Talmud is quite a feat. The Talmud itself fills, you know, many dozens of volumes, so this selection um, is what I'm gonna read. Um, the Gulag Archipelago by Alexander Solzhenitsyn, uh, Wild by Sheldon Strayed, The World of the Buddha, by Lu edited by Lucian Strick, um, collection of uh, texts from Buddhism, um, The Habsburg Monarchy by A.J.P. Taylor, uh, Idols of the King by Alfred Lloyd Tennyson. I read Les Mort d'Artour earlier this year, and now I'm really eager to read this after having read that. And I also actually watched, um, I watched a YouTube recording of Tristan and Isolde of the Wagner opera. And, uh, uh Tristan and Isolde is, is one of the Arthurian myths, and I know that it's told in here. Um, so that made me even more eager to read this. So, uh, yeah, hopefully not too distant future. History of the Peloponnesian War by Thucydides. Winter and Blood by James Welch, um, which I've neglected talking about at all on, uh, on my channel. But, uh, Sean the Book Maniac very kindly sent it to me because he knew I wanted to read James Welch. Um, so Sean sent it to me when he, um, uh, bailed on it. <clears throat> um, the House of Mirth by Edith Wharton. Um, another one of those authors I've wanted to get to and just never have, you know, gone to the store and actually picked her up. Um, and, uh, here is, uh, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof and the Milk Train Doesn't Stop Here Anymore by Tennessee Williams. Um, I read A Streetcar Named Desire earlier this year and really liked it. I did criticize it once, but, I mean, I did actually really like it, um, so... Um, and this just happened to be at my parents' house, so I grabbed it. Um, A Vindication of the Rights of Woman by Mary Wollstonecraft. New Wilderness Voices, um, edited by, um, Woodside. Her last name is Woodside, uh, Christine Woodside. Um, this is a collection of essays, um, about, uh, the Adirondacks, um, which I grew up around, um, but yeah, it's uh, essays from the Water Walterman Waterman Fun Contest, which is a contest uh, where people submit essays about hiking in the Adirondacks. Um, and uh, this is a collection of uh, of the essays that have won, and some of the runners up from from that contest. Um, and then lastly, here, um, 
101 Great American Poems, um, which is edited by not anyone in particular, actually. Um, it just says, uh, edited by the American Poetry and Literacy Project. Um, but anyway, yeah, just an anthology of uh, some of the greatest poems from American literature. And um, a little note uh, from the teacher who gave it to me, um, my, te my favorite teacher from high school, um, gave this to me. She gave she gave a volume like it to everyone in her in her AP English class. Uh, but um, yeah, anyway, uh, so it's uh, kind of has sentimental value. Um, but yeah, anyway, that is, is the bookshelf. I I'm gonna just put those uh, up when I uh, am done with the video. Um, and then here are some books. These are some books that I haven't read necessarily, but that I have to leave off because, as you can see, this bookshelf is full. Um, the reason I've left them off is because, like, this one is uh, an anthology of essays about Harold Pinter's work, and, you know, an anthology of essays by different authors. You know, I may read this cover to cover, but it's doubtful. One of the essays in here is by my, my maternal grandfather, uh, who was a scholar of modern British drama, and, um, Pinter was one of the one of the playwrights he wrote about quite a bit, um, so I might read that. Um, Lyrical Ballads, uh, so Collections of Poetry, uh, Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman, uh, Elizabeth Bishop, and, uh, down there is Wallace Stevens, um, John Dunn, and then, um, book I've never shown, uh, Cromwell's Handbook of Classical Literature, which is an yet another book I got from my grandpa, um, which is, uh, just, you know, I mean, it has just, uh, entries about pretty much everything related to classical literature. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it has Herodotus as Odysseus. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, so yeah, again, I mean, I won't ever read this cover to cover, like, I won't ever sit down and start at the beginning and finish the end. I'll just look through it, uh, or when I need, when I don't know a name or something, maybe, when I'm reading, um, something by, uh, <laughs> an ancient Greek or Roman author. Um, I'll just reference it. Um, and then we have some more collections of poetry. Um, Best American po uh, Poetry from 1994, which, which is such a coincidence for me to find in the used bookstore because 1994 is the year I was born. Um, that's Douglas Dunn. And then this, uh, a translation of Plato's Republic uh, w by Alan Bloom with a huge uh, interpretive essay at the back. The essay really it's about 130 pages long, so it's really a book in its own right. Um, but yeah, so you have, in the beginning, this is the translation of, of, of uh, The Republic, and then there's a big uh, interpretive essay. But I mean, I've, re I've read The Republic twice, um, so I took exception to this one just to create space in here for the books that I will be uh, prioritizing. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, I will uh, probably go and, um, and uh, set up my bookshelf uh, with my books that I have read and with these books and uh, probably do another video. So uh, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching guys. Bye